In this video, we're going to use direct modeling methodologies to create a part that connects two of these components together. We're not going to worry about adding constraints or parameters. We're going to use existing geometry to help us with our design, and at the end, we will detail our design with dimensions. We will start by projecting some existing geometry to help with our design. To mock up our design, we'll start with some basic rectangles. After extruding this symmetrically, we now have the basic shape of our design. We can start machining it away, just like you might on a CNC machine. Let's draw some 70 mm by 200 mm rectangles on the top face and then machine through the part. We aren't worried about dimensions quite yet, so we just want to make sure that we have machined far enough. We also want to make sure we are only machining through our new part and not through the break. Now we need to remove some material for the break to pivot around this clevis area, so let's project some more geometry. You can see that we can pick through and select the curved face of the break. Using the projected geometry, we can now machine through, again, making sure we only cut through the new part. We can use direct modeling methods to just drag the top of the clevis up a little bit to provide some clearance. In this case, one millimeter. After chamfering the edges of the clevis, the arms are a little bit too long, so we can just drag them up until it looks good. So, very quickly, we were able to create the clevis area using existing geometry. We need to remove some more material on the back of the part. We'll just create a quick rectangle, again, not worrying about dimensions. Now, move the top face down until we get it close to where we want. We need to have about two millimeters of clearance between this clevis and our part. We can do this by using the re-anchor command. By selecting the face of the clevis as the reference face, we can now set the distance to two millimeters. We'll do the same thing on the other side. We can probably remove a large section of material from the back, but we want to leave about 20 millimeters of material, so we will add a dimension to accomplish this. You can see that it looks like we made a mistake and our new part is clashing with one of the components. We will fix that later. Let's add some 10 millimeter fillets to the edges here. To check if our part is clashing, we can either run an interference check or use a section analysis. We can see that sure enough, our part is intersecting with the other component. We can use the press pull command to just pull the faces up until there is no more clashing.
we can turn off the analysis in the browser and we're back to continuing to design. Let's blend a few of these edges. We now have the basic shape of our design complete, but we know it needs to fit inside a sheet metal enclosure. Again, we can use existing geometry to split our design to allow it to fit. We can remove the part of the body that we don't need to keep. Let's soften these edges with a chamfer and some blends. Now, we haven't been worrying about dimensions very much so far, but we want to start to lock down our design by specifying exact distances. We can do this by using the re-anchor command like before. We can select the front of the arm and the back of the part. By dragging around, we can see that about 255 millimeters looks pretty good. So we can type in 255. And now those faces are exactly 255 millimeters apart. We can also add clearance to the inside of the clevis using the press pull command. By offsetting both faces of the arm, notice how the blends update accordingly. We can also re-anchor the faces to specify the exact width that we want. Because we built the part exactly where it needs to be, we can use as-built joints to show how these parts would interact with each other. First, we need to convert the body to a component. Now we can create as-built joints that revolve around the bolt holes. Now when we grab the main shaft, we can see how our new component works with the other components.